Hey mommies, how are you? I hope that everybody is doing awesome. And I wanted to bring this video because lately, this is something that I get asked all the time. And lately I've been thinking about it more because now I have two, well, two toddlers really. Um, they're my babies, but they're toddlers. And what happens is that now when we get home from like daycare and we are like sitting down to eat and stuff, it's so um, kind of like time consuming that I'm still having to like um, spoon feed and come, come, and, come and eat your food and put it basically, I spend so much time trying to get them to eat. Uh, and I think part of the problem is really because I never gave them an opportunity to eat, to take an interest in eating themselves. So um, I did like two different um, approaches to how I introduce food. So that's why I wanted to do this video because I feel that it's so, so important that children learn to eat by themselves and they have the motivation to eat. Okay, obviously there's gonna be lots of distractions when they're toddlers, they wanna play, there's stuff going on, they get so easily distracted. But it's so cool when you see a toddler that can sit down and pick up his own food and eat and manage it. And it might be a little bit complicated because um, the traditional foods that we give to toddlers are usually like soups or purees or things like that. So finger foods we're not really used to. It's not really what um, our, our parents fed us or what we've seen other people feeding. But it is such a great feeding style um, to choose to start to train your, your baby or your toddler to eat. And it's also something else that kind of society has put into us where it's like, oh, choking hazard, there's so many food choking hazards. Well, first of all, I wanna remind you, and I've seen it in my own kids, that children have like a natural gag reflex. Uh, well, babies and toddlers do, and um, they do it from a very young age. And you see it, in fact, when they're breastfeeding, you know, and they something didn't go right, or they just gag, and it just all comes out, and it's just very easy for them to do. Uh, we, I guess, somewhere along the line, we forget about that, and we easily choke, but babies and toddlers don't. Um, unless there's something, obviously, com completely obstructing their, their throat here, so that would be really the choking hazard. But if it's food and stuff like that, it really, like I said, they just gag and they just bring it out. So sometimes we're so concerned of chopping everything up into tiny little pieces where there's no possibility of them choking, but we're actually um, creating a, a, an obstacle there because they're not able to pick up their foods and things like that. We're having to spoon feed things to them. But if we were just able to implement a, a method like the um, baby led weaning method where what happens there, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about this method, is that first of all, it's great because you would introduce this method when the child is ready to eat. So they're like sitting, sitting by themselves, they're able to pick up things and put them to their mouth. So when a baby's there, they're probably gonna be like six, seven, eight months. So they're gonna be definitely ready for solids. You wouldn't do this with a child, with a baby that is like four or five months. Um, usually probably won't be at that developmental stage yet under, unless there's some, uh, a really awakened baby or something like that and there are cases like that. But in the most cases it's going to be from six to kind of eight months and that's the perfect time because the gut is ready to start taking in food and uh, not so much the breath and, and other than breast milk basically. So the way that this method works, and I'll do other videos about that, I just wanted to introduce and kind of open your mind to a different style of, um, of baby feeding, especially the first foods of your baby. So what you would do is kind of start with, it doesn't have to be like a specific type of food, like we've been led to kind of believe before where you introduce uh, um, like oatmeal first, and then you would do like the green vegetables and then the orange vegetables and then the fruits. That's not how you introduce a uh, salad. You just introduce whatever you want. When there's no specific rule or guideline in regards to how you have to introduce them. And the other thing is you don't have to do the three days of like peas and the three days of broccoli to see if there's an allergy. Um, usually if you start kind of with safe type of vegetables like you know sweet potato or chicken and things like that there's not many allergies to those type of um, vegetables or foods um, but to be honest with you I don't really agree with that because it's like you know it's it's easy for you to identify when when kids have allergies and you would know also um, with your pediatrician way before if your child is more kind of um, um, subjective to have those type of food allergies too. 
Um, so you can introduce whatever food you want. Like for example, you could start with chicken and sweet potato, like I said, or you could start with avocados. It's good for it to be something that your child can easily grab and that it's not too slippery. And then the idea is that they start to put foods in their mouth and, and, and feel and taste textures and flavors and, and um, all those types of things basically. And they're not gonna necessarily eat it. They are maybe just be able to suck on it and get little tiny pieces out of it because they don't really have teeth by then to be able to take a big chunk. And the idea is that you do it in big chunks actually. So they're able to put it to their mouth and out and play with it and suck on it and maybe munch on it or something. So that's the idea of it. And then eventually they will start taking little bites and taking it in. And then further down the mo months, the more food you're introducing, things like that, then they're probably going to be eating maybe like 80% of it. But remember that food is not so important. Like after one, after one year old, that's when food starts taking more of a replacement in regards to breast milk. But from zero to one, their principal source of nutrition will be breast milk and they'll have everything they need from breast milk. In fact, it doesn't even replace water. Um, so, but that's a whole other subject when you introduce water. Um, but I just wanted to bring this idea because what this type of feeding style does is first, it's wonderful for children or babies that have been breastfed because breastfed babies auto regulate their intake of food. So they decide how much they want to eat when they want to eat. And this is the same principle. So that it smooths from, from one type of feeding to the next type of feeding, but with the same principle that children, uh, Anne is saying, I love it. Yes, I love it too. I wish I had implemented it stronger with both my kids. Um, but yeah, it's wonderful because then children auto regulate how much they eat. You don't have to be forcing, eat your food, do this, do that, open your mouth, the airplane, all this type of, or, or sit down and watch the TV, which is the worst one. Sit down and watch TV while you're eating, you know, all those things. So I just want to bring this to mind. I'll talk a little bit more about that. I just wanted to bring this concept because a lot of you that are kind of like at that uh, five month, uh, six month, seven month mark with your babies. So I just wanted to, to bring you this. And if, if you want to learn more about this, let me know so I can do more videos about it. But just wanted to bring this idea to you because it's so easy when you just sit down and you're just like, and the baby's just like, and eating, but they're not really enjoying their food. They're not really thinking about what they're doing. They're not taking the initiative. Um, and then later down the line, once your toddler becomes like two or three, you'll have that issue that I'm having with my toddlers when they eat. I don't have it so much with Isaac because I did do the peas things and more food chopping up and putting it in front of him, but it wasn't like to the full spectrum of what baby led winning is really like. I just kind of touched on the basis. I wish I had gone all the way um, and, and part of the reason I didn't, to be honest, this is something, again, of communication with your partner, with your spouse, with family, people around you, people that take care of your kids, because my husband has a phobia of choking. He choked, uh, when he was like a, not a baby, when he choked, when he was like an older child. And he remembers it like, like it happened yesterday. And he's very, very cautious about making sure that everything is chopped off. And, and when we hear stories of, of a, a toddler choking on a grape and things like that, it sticks with you and you know, you're, you're scared of it. So you want to kind of take control of that area. But children are, are, are perfectly equipped once they get to that, you know, developmental stage to start experimenting with foods where you don't have to give everything to them. And the other thing that um, really annoys me is that whole thing of all this process that you have to have with foods and with, well, not so much foods because they're not foods, they're purees and they're like soups. Um, you don't have to start off with like peas and then carrot the next day and then sweet potato. There's no order. You can introduce foods in whichever order you like. Um, and definitely you don't have to do with the whole baby cereal thing. That's that's basically incorrect. You don't have to start off with that food. I mean, if you wanted to, you could. Um, but in fact, I am more kind of like the more flavors you introduce, the more textures you introduce, the better your 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 child is going to learn to eat and learn about different types of foods not just stick to rigid foods and then later down the line when they become toddlers they'll be um you know they, they won't be they'll be less prone to be picky eaters basically although there are stages 
where kids tend to prefer blander textures, but they'll be less of picky eaters. And picky eaters, there's a lot of them out there and it's so annoying when you have one of those because it's so difficult to choose foods and to get them to experiment and try different things. So um, I hope that you like this video. Let me know if this is something that interests you so I can do more videos about it. A couple of moms just commented now that they love the style of the baby led weaning and I do too. To be really honest with you, I wish that I had kind of been stronger about it and implemented it with um, Samuel and with Isaac I had gone the full way with it because I feel that now it'd be like less trouble for me because I would be able to sit them down and they'd be able to eat easier. Um, especially, you know, I w you'll see later on when you go to, to a restaurant, you're trying to eat your food and they're at that age where they can eat it by themselves and you're still having to spoon food, sp spoon feed them all the stuff and chop it up into tiny little pieces. It's not that fun. And then maybe if you have a third one or whatever, then it's three times that you're having to do that. So it's a, and initially it's a little bit messy and stuff because you're like experimenting, checking food around and stuff. But then once they get the hang of it and they start to enjoy their food, then it's a lot smooth sailing. It's a lot of work that you get off of your plate so they can do their thing. And you're also giving them that independence. So there's a lot of things that tie into that. And it's a really, really, really great method that I really strongly recommend if you're starting to go onto solids. Bye mommies.